Top GM salespeople have learned their success depends on having a regular supply of potential buyers. Actively prospecting for sales can dramatically increase the sales results you would normally obtain from floor traffic alone. If the prospecting includes planning your approach and then drawing from various sources. Now, whether you're prospecting by mail, by personal contact, in using the mail to keep your name in front of prospects, you can send thank you cards to people you've talked to. Tell them you appreciate their time and interest. Regularly correspond, perhaps with a news business postcard to notify prospects of your dealership, sales, and service promotions. When prospecting by personal contact, introduce yourself and your dealership to the neighbors of your new customers. Look for potential buyers in your service department and on the road. Approach local business people. Prospect wherever you go. Remember, you can increase the scope of your influence by getting people you meet and talk to to prospect for you by passing your message on to their family, friends, neighbors, business customers. If you have a planned approach, telephone prospecting can be an effective way of selling appointments to sell your product. Let's look at one planned approach that can help you break the ice of cold canvassing by telephone. Hey, Alan. How you doing, buddy? Oh, just great. Is that a new suit you're wearing? Oh, you betcha, little buddy. 300 bucks, custom tailored. And how about this charming little diamond pinky I got to go with it? Real class, huh? Yeah, sure. Hey, tell me, I mean, if you don't mind my asking, you know, how can you afford all this stuff selling cars here at Gorgeous Motors? <laughs> I'll bet you think I got a little something else going on the side, don't you? Oh, no, no, no. Forget I mentioned it. I, I don't want to know. You no, but I want you to know. Well, since you put it that way, sure. I got this new suit from my telephone work. Oh, that's enough. I don't want to hear anymore. Ah, telephone prospecting. Mm -hmm. That's where it's at, my man. Well, I get enough and extra sales for my telephone appointments to buy a new suit like this every month if I want to. Hey, I'll see you around. I got some calls to make. Mm -hmm. Telephone prospecting. Data processing, data delicatessens. Ah, here it is. Dentists. A list by geographic locations. Ah! Stanley Shapiro, DDS. Well, here goes. Hello, is Dr. Shapiro there? But only for an emergency. This isn't a... I was on my way to work, and, and, and I broke my tooth. I've still got it, though. I mean, I swallowed it. And my mouth hurts real bad. And, and I'm allergic to pain. But Dr. Shapiro, you don't want to buy a car, do you? Yes, sir, I... No, sir, I... $300 suits. Diamond pinky ring. Swank restaurants. Pretty girls? Maybe I should try another. Oh, I'll wait. Don't be silly, it's just a phone. What if they're eating lunch? At nine in the morning? It's staring at me. I can feel it. I'm very sensitive. Uh, I'll just reach out and... Germs. Yeah, telephones carry germs. But they're my germs. This is... All I have to do is... Ugh, I can't stand it anymore. I just can't stand anymore. I just can't stand it. I can't stand it anymore. And I can't do it. I, I, I help. You rang? You rang? Who are you? How did you get here? I'm Miss Moneyphone. I'm here to assist you in your telephone prospecting. I don't think I'm going to be making any more phone calls today. I got a headache. That's because you didn't plan your calls now, did you? If you expect to make any money at all telephone prospecting, you've got to have a plan and stick to it. <laughs> what are you doing? I don't know. Maybe, maybe it was something I ate. Yeah, but maybe I'm dreaming. I don't... Oh, stop that or you'll never learn anything. Look, the telephone's a useful tool that can save you a lot of time if you learn to use it properly. Well, think of all the extra sales you'll make. The extra commissions. 
Hey, just a minute. I got an idea. Let me borrow the phone. Sure. Hi, it's me. Your son. Alan! Hey, come on, Ma, listen. You want to buy a car? She, she didn't have to hang up so hard. I got very sensitive ears. Come on, we're going to phone school. Welcome to phone school. In today's lesson, you'll learn how to conquer fear of phoning and make more money through telephone prospecting. The first thing to remember is that you must prepare for rejection. That, that sounds like my ex-girlfriend. And you must not let rejection stand in your way. Telephone prospecting is not a popularity contest. It's a numbers game. On the average, you'll get one solid prospect from every 10 phone calls, and you have an excellent chance to close one out of every four solid prospects. You could easily make one, two, or three additional sales per month you wouldn't have had without telephone prospecting. But how do I know who to call or, or when to call or what to say? The printed materials you'll get with this unit will give you good ideas on sources for telephone prospects. The second important thing to remember is the purpose of your call. You're not trying to sell a car over the phone. You're selling an appointment to see you personally. The third thing to remember is to plan your call beforehand. Now, for assistance in how to plan calls and what to say, follow the directions of your instructor, Miss Money Phone. This is a call planning form. I don't think it'll go with my drapes. Oh, come on. The call planning form will help you plan each call, remember the proper steps, and give you a place to make notes during the call. Well, you can even keep it as a record of good prospects. Now, let's try the first step. How do you do that? <laughs> Never mind. The first step is to introduce yourself and the dealership. Here. Now, make sure that you're talking to the right person. Then introduce yourself and the dealership. Okay, now repeat after me. Hello, is this Mr. Prospect? I'm Alan Woodman of Gorgeous Motors. Well, go on, do it. Oh, okay. Hello, is this Mr. Prospect? I'm Alan Woodman of Gorgeous Motors. Now what? Very good. Now we're ready to move to the next step. Establish a common ground. Now, to establish a common ground, you have to take the curse off the call. Curse? I don't know. I don't like to fool around with religious ceremonies. I, I could get an asthma attack. Oh, Alan, that's just a saying. You're supposed to ask if the prospect has a minute to talk with you. Make an interest-creating comment. Find something to link you with the prospect. Yeah, but how do I do that? Well, you could say you refer were referred by a mutual friend, a customer of yours. Or maybe you got his name through the dealership service customer files. You're just trying to establish a connection, a reason to call. Oh, I see. I'm trying to gain his attention and confidence. Right. Now, repeat after me. I hope I'm not taking you away from anything important, but I'd like to take just a minute to talk with you about our new cars that could give you good value for your money. Okay, make the connection. I hope I'm not taking you away from anything important, but I'd like to take a minute to talk with you about our new cars that give you good value for your money. But what if he says no? Well, that's easy. Then just ask him when it would be convenient for you to get together. And, and if he stays on the phone? Oh, well, then you can say something like, I notice you're one of our service customers. Have they been taking good care of you? No matter what he answers, you've got a good opening to talk about the new cars. So now I've made the connection. Very good. Now we're ready to qualify. I'm a detective? Oh, boy, I always wanted to be a detective. I wonder how you use these things. The purpose for qualifying is to find out if the prospect is in the market and how we can interest him. You've got to get a conversation going by asking open-ended questions. Questions that start with what, where, when, why, which, how, or who. But what if he isn't in the market? Well, then you ask him when he will be and if you can call back then. The important thing to remember is that we're trying to discover needs. Now listen to this. You can ask your prospect, what do you like best about your present car? You know, it's a funny thing, but most people act just like you ask them for the bad things, and they'll tell you everything they don't like about their present car. Either way, you get ammunition for the next step, selling the benefits of both the car and coming in for an appointment. It's okay. You can look now. Where are we? Isn't there an easier way to do this? Oh, Alan, there are no shortcuts to success. We've arrived at the purpose of a telephone prospecting call. Asking for an appointment. Actually, you can ask for the appointment at almost any time during the call. But usually it's better to qualify and sell a benefit or two first. 
Hey, no funny hats. That's right. The appointment is with you. A face-to-face -face contact. Your chance to sell a car. It can be at the dealership or the prospect's home or place of business. Now, what would you say? Uh, could I have an appointment with you? Wrong. He can say no to that. You want to use a forced choice question. Now, repeat after me. Mr. Prospect, would it be more convenient if we met this Wednesday evening, or would sometime Friday be better? Mr. Prospect? Uh, no, no, into the phone. Mr. Prospect, would it be more convenient for you if we met this Wednesday evening, or would sometime Friday be better? Excellent. Now, what if he said neither one would be convenient? I hang up? <laughs> Not if you want to make more money. Ask him when would be a convenient time for him. Okay, we're on to the next step. Overcoming objection. Objection sustained! You can't argue with the prospect. He'll hang up on you every time. But your printed material in this unit contains a lot of ideas on meeting many different types of objections. Here, try this. Oh, Judge, Alan here wants to talk with you about buying a new car. Oh, well, the car I have now runs fine. I'm glad to hear that, Judge, because it means you've taken good care of it. We pay top dollar for well-maintained cars like yours. In fact, it'll never be worth more than it is right now while it's in peak condition. You might be surprised how much it's worth if you bring it in for an appraisal. Would today or this Friday be more convenient? Uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, well, uh, my docket appears uh, clear on Friday. Shall we say 10 o'clock, sir? Uh, yes, uh, that'll be fine. You see, it's just like a face-to-face -face objection. Make sure you understand it, then answer it in a friendly and informative manner. But don't read a canned answer. Just be yourself. Hey, I just got an appointment. You may think you have an appointment, but the prospect's not always so sure there's a commitment. That's why you have to confirm the appointment. Do I have to do it every time? Well, perhaps not every time, but it's so simple to say something like, okay, I have you down on my calendar. I'll see you at 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon at Gorgeous Motors, right? Well, here, you try it. Okay, I've got you down on my calendar. I'll see you at 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon at Gorgeous Motors, right? Beautiful. Now there's just one more thing. Express your thanks. Don't forget to thank your prospect for his time and attention. If it's a previous customer, you can even ask for a referral like this. By the way, do you know anyone who's in the market for a car? By the way, do you know anyone... <laughs> no, no, you don't have to repeat it. Just remember to thank him. Thank you, Miss Moneyphone. Oh, you're welcome, Alan. Now we're going to put all the steps together. Well, here we are. The call planning form will help you prepare for and maintain control of the call. Just to save time, this one's already filled out. Now, where did we get the name? The Yellow Pages? <laughs> no, not that. You could waste a lot of valuable time on cold calls. You've got to look for more promising sources of prospects, like this service customer file. Huh. Look. Stanley Shapiro, DDS? Well, I just called him. He doesn't want to buy a car. Besides, he's too busy. Go on, try it. Okay. Hello, Dr. Shapiro. Yeah, yeah. I'm Alan Woodman of Gorgeous Motors. Uh -huh. And I see from our service records you're a regular customer. Uh. I hope I'm not taking you away from anything important, because I'd like to take a minute and talk with you about our new cars that give you good value for your money. It saves me money. I'm right in the middle of oral surgery. But that sounds interesting. My daughter's gas charge is bigger than the national debt. <laughs> Does your daughter have her own car? Uh, she thinks so, but no, she drives the family car. Oh, well, how old is it? Uh, well, she'll be 17 next March if I let her. No, the car. Oh, it's three years old. Well, Dr. Shapiro, did you know that many of our new cars get 10% better fuel economy? Well, that could reduce your gas bill quite a bit. And some of our other models are even more economical. In case you're thinking of getting your daughter her own wheels, how much driving does she do? A lot. Hey, a nurse. Uh, hey, get the man another shot of Novocaine. I'm on the phone. Who else drives the car? Well, just my wife. She uses it for shopping and her yoga club. Yoga club? Well, Dr. Shapiro, did you know that our new cars are bigger on the inside? That means more room for the yoga club and more comfort for your wife. You know, I'd like to show you just how much you'll enjoy the increased roominess and economy of our new cars compared to your present vehicle. Could you meet me at the dealership tomorrow at 2, or would Friday at 3 be more convenient for you? Uh, uh, yeah, nurse, turn up the music. Uh, uh, look, I guess Friday at 3 would be all right. But really, our old car runs fine. Well, 
Well, I'm glad to hear that because we pay top dollar for clean, well-maintained cars like yours, and it'll never be worth more than it is right now. In fact, you'd be surprised at what it's worth. Our appraiser can give you a figure when you bring it in. I've got it down on my calendar for Friday at 3, right? Just ask for Alan Woodman. All right. Look, do you know some nut called me about a half hour ago trying to sell me a car? Well, it takes all kinds, Dr. Shapiro. I guess we can't be too hard on the poor guy. Well, he sure could have learned a few things from you. Hey, guys. Yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for your time and your kind comments. Have a good day now. Goodbye. How's that? Alan, congratulations. You graduate with honors. You've conquered fear of phoning, and you're well on your way to more sales through telephone prospecting. Well, I've taught you all I can, so goodbye and good luck. It's the diploma. Nobody's ever gonna believe this, but it works. I wonder if it'll work on my mom. As a sales professional in a highly competitive field, the way you first appear to a prospect, first relate to a prospect, and the manner in which you prepare to counsel the prospect can dramatically influence that person's decision to buy from you today. It all begins with you selling yourself. Put yourself into the role of a prospect who might see you today. Would your appearance communicate that you are a professional? Or think of someone with whom you, as a customer, have recently conducted business. How did that salesperson treat you? Did his or her response to you influence your buying decision? Most people would agree that when they're making a major buying decision, a salesperson's attitude toward them can make a difference. When you treat your prospect with respect before you know what they want, or even if they can afford to buy it, your attitude can favorably influence their decision to buy from you. In this presentation, you'll see an exaggerated example of the wrong way to create a favorable first impression. Then you'll see a dramatization of a six-point procedure of effectively greeting a prospect. Incorporating this procedure into your greeting style can help assure your prospects that you are the person capable of helping them make a major buying decision. The first impression prospects receive from you determines their attitude. Let's watch a dramatization that combines many common mistakes made in greeting the customer. Hey there, how you doing? We got a great deal on small cars today. What you got in mind? Uh, well, uh... I just want to get some prices. Yeah, that's all right. What you, what you driving now? I brought my pickup, but actually I'm not going to trade it. Hey, I... a pickup. You know, we've got a great deal on pickups. My appraisal will give you a good allowance on one. I'm not going to trade. Just wanted a price. Uh -huh. Well, he isn't here now anyway. Uh, by the way, my name is Elmer Sutcliffe. I'm Jerry McKinney. Hey, Jay. Uh, thanks a lot for your time, but maybe I'd better do some more shopping. Uh, I'll be back later. Uh, OK, Jerry. Yeah, you do that. Of course, this Elmer Sutcliffe doesn't work here anymore. Prospects form their opinion of you in the first few minutes of conversation. The way you begin is crucial in establishing the kind of rapport that will lead to a sale. We've done research across the country to discover how successful salespersons greet customers. We've established, as a result, a six-point step-by-step plan that you can easily follow. The first step to remember is to pause. Prospects are people with individual needs. You should remember how they must be feeling about coming in. If you greet them too quickly, it will turn them off. But don't wait too long, either. The second step is to get the prospect's name right away. Hello. I'm Elmer Sudcliffe. Your name, sir? Jerry McKinney. Mr. McKinney, nice to know you. Won't you have a seat? Thank you. It is only common courtesy to introduce yourself, shake hands, and get the customer's name. This creates an atmosphere of caring that gives the customer the confidence to buy from you. A recent survey of GM dealerships revealed that 
one third of salespersons failed to introduce themselves. And one third of salespersons even failed to get the customer's name. How can a customer have confidence enough to buy from you if he doesn't even know your name? The third step, write the name down. I want to make sure I've got the spelling right. Is that M-C or M-A-C? That's M-C. <clears throat> M-C. K-I-N. N-E-Y. Mm -hmm. N-E-Y. And first name is Jerry. Jerry, that's right. This shows your attentiveness and interest. People identify with their names and are complimented that you will take the time to get it right. Of course, you want a record of the name in case you have to follow up and recontact the prospect. The fourth step is to consciously and deliberately use the person's name frequently during your conversation, both in order to remember it and also to make it clear that you are speaking personally on a one-to-one -one level. This inspires trust. Unless you are encouraged by your customer to use the first name, it is better to be formal and to use the last name. Be alert to the differing reactions of different age groups to the use of first and last names. Now then, what kind of a car are you looking for today, Mr. McKinney? I really have made up my mind. Mm -hmm. Probably a four-door. Mm -hmm. Use the name when you are questioning for needs. And remember that listening carefully to the prospect's answers shows your respect and helps you decide what to present. The next step reinforces your rapport with the prospect. Show your appreciation for the customer's decision to come to you and tell him that you and the dealership are there to serve his needs. You know, Mr. McKinney, I want to thank you for coming in uh, today to our dealership. We really do appreciate it. Well, our, thank you. Well, I think part of whatever we do is uh, certainly reflected in our service, so we'd like to give some good service. I wonder if I could show you what we uh, uh, have on display here at the uh, dealership. That's what I came for. Okay. Will you show me them? The sixth step is to take it easy. Don't rush the presentation, and don't let the prospect rush you. Won't you go ahead and have a seat again, Mr. McKinney? Well, thank you. We'll get to the price in just a moment, and I really think you'll be pleased with what we can do for you. First of all, I'd like to make sure that I know exactly what you need. If you take the proper price shopper buy somewhere, so it is wiser to spend too much of your productive time with the prospect, time with the prospect and little of your counseling steps. Selling is based on the response and interaction between individuals. It cannot be reduced to a rigid formula. The principles of this system are valid, but you might not use all the steps in every situation, or you may not use them in exactly the same sequence. The last thing to remember is to use your own good judgment in applying these six easy steps. This is where your experience and attention help you determine the proper course of action. This system is based upon the principle of understanding people. And you need to convey that understanding to your customer. When you're successful in doing this, you convey to him the message, this is a great car and you ought to buy it. Fifteen billion dollars, the largest amount in the history of the industry, has been allocated to provide you with the most innovative and advanced products available over the next few years. Some of these new models have already been introduced. With such a broad variety of offerings, you have the capability of fulfilling the automotive needs of almost every prospect you greet. Remember that the first impression is very powerful. Replacing the customer's confusion with product information increases his certainty and encourages the decision to buy. Your feeling of respect for the customer is crucial.